Hello, welcome to the third and final video blog in my IDS 403 class uh, with SNU. This last installment delves into the world of neo-evolution and its possible implications for our future. First, let me describe the concept of neo-evolution. I appreciate the three-tiered concept of evolution presented by Paul Root Wolp in his TED video that we saw this week. In it, he described three separate waves of evolution. The first, a familiar evolutionary point that you'll, you'll recognize is Darwinian evolution, or passive evolution. This is the adaptation of species that we are all familiar with when talking about evolution in and of itself. Next, Wool presented civilization as an evolutionary concept. This idea presents the theory that once humans began controlling the environment around them, there was a new evolutionary shift that took place. And then lastly, Wolt describes the latest evolutionary phase as directed or designed evolution. I believe we can also describe this as neo-evolution. In Harvey Feinberg's TED speech, he more succinctly defined this concept as a non-natural evolution that is purposely guided by human hands. There are many examples developed by our recent technological advancements of neo-evolution. One of the most obvious examples was highlighted by Fukuyama in our text this week, the field, of advan field and advancements in medicine. Fukuyama points out the salient point that in 1900 the average lifespan was 47 years old whereas in the year 2000 we could expect to live as long as 77 years. This is a profound difference brought about by our use of technology, obviously. Additionally, Daniel Kraft highlights that the trends in medicine are highly technical and innovative. This is seen in many of his examples, including new diagnostic methods that gather massive amounts of patient information that may someday allow artificial intelligence to diagnose and prescribe treatments. Think about that for a moment. However, Michael Best shows, and I'm inclined to agree, that there are three modern examples of neo-evolution that are most likely to transform our future. They were pharmaceuticals, for one. The second one is prosthetics and informatics, which could be kind of a, a cyborg-like technology where we can literally tie into animal and human brains with computers and interface with them. And then the last one was genetics. While our advancements in both drug and handicapped enhancement are profound, I felt that genetics highlights both the positive and dangerous aspects uh, within the neo-evolutionary debate. Some of the potential benefits of genetic enhancements seem amazing at first glance. We may someday soon literally have the ability to eliminate any or all birth defects and at the same time enhance our ability to resist disease. The incredible benefit potential for humankind is mind-boggling. Of course, there is a flip side to this beneficent coin, since geneticists can also potentially manipulate personality and physical traits in our children. Bess additionally points out that our current research, research has allowed us to alter lab rats and monkeys to glow in the dark. So these two types of manipulation with us enhancing our humans and our animals in these strange and scary ways, they raise the question, we can do this. We physically have the ability to do so now with our advanced technology. But should we? Of course, this brings us to the, the actual crux of the neo-evolutionary debate. As various technologies advance and allow the possibility of human enhancement, where do we draw that line? Bess again presents another interesting point when he said that in the past, many of our technological advancements came about gradually, allowing society and culture to adapt to them. With the rapid technological changes taking place in our modern world, we must be careful not to allow our ambition and excitement over these amazing breakthroughs to cloud our judgment. In the past, as technology affected our culture, the government took responsibility to help manage the change, such as the road and highway systems that we implemented once automobiles finally took off and became prevalent throughout the United States. Best proposes that some form of regulation may be necessary, but will likely not be able to stem the flow of technological change and inevitable enhancements from the flow of new evolution. Myself, I have faith in the adaptability of the human species via good old-fashioned Darwinian evolution. History may have never seen the onslaught of technological change that we expect in the coming decades, but then again, the future is always unknown. When the future becomes the present, humans have managed to adapt and incorporate these changes, even if sometimes with a little heartburn. The greater fear for me are the ethical and social ramifications that neo-evolution brings to the forefront. We can clone species and create hybrid species and even uh, excuse me and, and even enhance our own species. 
Are we weighing the implications of those technological, excuse, technologies against a moral and ethical code so that our future is not just more highly technical and innovative, which is inevitable, but it's also a better one for future generations? Thank you.